Well, you've done a lot of different things. Uh, I mentioned law, finance, you've been in commercial roles, you've been an MP, you've uh, held various uh, uh, roles within the British government, and now you're in health. So tell me, what, what has you most excited about the opportunities in health? Well, the National Health Service, for those of you who don't know, it, we, have, we look after 60 million people, so it's big. It's funded through taxation, it's free for everybody. And in the UK, the National Health Service is sort of part of our DNA, really. So being responsible for the NHS is a huge privilege for me. And I think at a time when, you know, so many countries are going through such difficult times with populism growing in Europe and, and societies feeling very fragmented, having something that unifies people, that we're all in it together, makes the NHS, you know, even more important today than it's probably ever been. It's an amazing structure, organization, entity. And, and you're right, it is very close to the British people. I mentioned that I'm, I'm British by yeah. choice. Yeah. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I swore my allegiance to the Queen. And, uh, and I'm very proud to be there and still call it home, and my family is there. Um, but it makes it a little bit challenging, because it is so close to the heart that it's almost difficult to criticize or, or to find any fault, because it is such a, uh, an agenda part, especially if you have an American accent. You, yeah. you don't want to do that. So, so uh, with an organization that is 70 years old, in a country that has one of the oldest medical schools and hospitals, St. Bart's in London, is about nine, over 900 years old. How do you go through facilitating change, and what sort of changes are underway there? Yeah, so Bart's Hospital was, re, was rebuilt in 1500, you know, so, and, um, it's pretty <laughs> well, amazing. Well, the name, the, you know, the trademark. <laughs> Americans are always quite impressed by that. Um, I think getting change into any big organization is always difficult. We employ 1.4 million people in the NHS. Um, and you know, clinicians are, you know, profession, prof, the, the professions are always very conservative with a small C. So change is difficult. But actually the digital revolution that's happening is already changing the NHS you know, every day. I mean, access to primary care is changing. People are more wearables, are have, you know, it, the digital, sort of revolution has been slow coming to health, much slower than, for example, in banking in the, in the UK, but it's coming. And that's gonna change the NHS hugely. I, I think it is, and I'm really excited about it, frankly, because we've had, you also worked with uh, Jeremy Hunt yeah. at one point, and now we've got a new Secretary of State for Health, uh, yeah. Matt, Matt uh, Hancock, yeah. whose family actually is in software, and he was the Minister or the Secretary of State for Digital, uh, uh, I forget, a few other things. Yeah, added culture, on there. media, and There sport, you go, yeah. add them all in there. Mm. Uh, and now he's the Secretary for Health. Uh, yeah. and so uh, what sorts of tangible changes do you see? I could certainly name a few myself, live there and uh, living there and being yeah. in the industry, but what, what are some of the things you want to tell people well, about? Well, I think what I've really noticed in this week at the J.P. Morgan conference just down the road from here is that, uh, which is different from even two years ago, which is that data has become the big new thing in, in healthcare, particularly in pharmaceuticals and biotech. Mm -hmm. Now, we have got data. You know, we've got 60 million people in the NHS. We've got cradle-to-grave care. We've got registries and every, every major disease has got their own registries. And of course, we've now got genomics. Um, you know, we've just completed the 100,000 you know, whole sequencing genome project. So we've got, I think, probably some of the best data in the world, which is the raw material for many of the digital companies that are in this room and attending this conference here. So if we can provide that data in a well-curated form, and we can do it with public confidence, they know that the confidentiality is going to be properly secured, then I think we've got a, a huge resource in the UK and we can become, I think, the center for personalized medicine in the world. Well, <clears throat> having been there for 15 years and talking about health technology for all of that time and even proceeding, I can say that within the last three or four years, there have been some real um, tangible changes that have been afoot. I mean, discussed for a long time mm. uh, as, as technology has changed a great deal over the past 10 years as well. Uh, but now there are lots of programs that really provide opportunities, I think, for early stage businesses to, to get some uh, support, some access. Can you tell us about any of those? Yeah, well, we're setting up this year uh, what we call Health Tech Connect, which is a sort of a portal, really, for any uh, sort of digital product that is that any companies here or entrepreneurs in the US as well as in the UK want to introduce into the NHS, they can come through that Health Tech Connect um, straight into the NHS. I mean, we, we want the NHS to be the sort of testbed 
for new technology. And obviously it's got to be safe and it's got to be approved and regulated, but we want the NHS to be the most sort of accessible healthcare system in the world for new technology. A lot of these things require changes in culture. Uh, and then the other thing they really require are changes in business models. And when you have a socialized system that everything is free, which mm. has a cost, a yeah. very high cost, yeah. um, how, how are you going about changing some of the things to actually incentivize, reward, um, recognize, facilitate some of these new ways of working coming into the NHS? Well, I think what's interesting to me is that if you take the, the, the clinical, the professions, doctors, in particular doctors, these are people who are naturally tech type people. They understand technology. And if you look at some of the changes that, have, if you just look at the med medicine ch changes in sort of medical practice in the UK, I mean, monoclonal antibodies came from the UK. You know, you wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Humira if it wasn't for mm -hmm. the UK. Um, we wouldn't have, the, we discovered DNA, you know, we wouldn't, have, and the, the, all the Illumina whole you know, sequencing in, in the, U, in the US, US came out of Cambridge, you know, so, you know, we've always been at the leading edge of, of new medical practice, and I think there's this um, innate sort of innovativeness in the sort of British culture, if you like, which I think will see us, you know, at the, the front of the field on this. Now, of course, I know in California, this is, this is I mean, this is, the sort of the mecca, isn't it, for digital technologies and what have you. And I think what you've done in California has been unbelievably successful. But I would encourage anyone here, you know, if you come to, particularly to Oxford, Cambridge and London, mm -hmm. there's some fantastic new technology coming in there. I mean, DeepMind, which is now part of Google, came out of UCL, the University mm -hmm. in London, for example. The, the AI resource in London, um, down, down the Euston Road in London, is absolutely phenomenal. Excellent. Um, what about any moonshots? I mean, we, we talked on the opening day yesterday morning and even this morning about moonshots and the importance of setting high goals. What are mm. some of the big goals that you have for the NHS well, I, in um, England? I attended a, a, a lecture given by Joe Biden, in, actually in London, uh, um, a month or two ago. Okay. And he was talking about eliminating cancer. Now, that, would be, that is a moonshot that's worth going for. Now, I think the, the 100,000 genome project that we've done um, is a first step, a really important first step. We're going to increase that to 5 million people. It's 100,000 at the moment over the next few years of identifying early many rare diseases mm -hmm. and developing therapies to deal with them. Now, that, this, this is potentially, um, I mean, this is, this is a real game changer. I mean, I think for a, you know, my son is a young, is a junior doctor, age 30. Um, so he's just sort of qualified, if you like. And I think for a young doctor coming into medicine today, it has never been better. The opportunities for curing people from, you know, various cancers and other illnesses that were incurable only a few years ago, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity. I mean, it, it was amazing in one week in December of this year, not only did we complete the 100,000 genome, sequencing of the 100,000 genomes, but we introduced CAR T-cell therapy into sort of mainstream NHS treatment. Now that Fantastic. Britain's been in the news a lot recently, uh, internationally. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I want to really focus on some of the great things that people should know about that might be obscured by some of the headlines that they're hearing about. You come from a world of business. You've been in government, uh, you've law and finance. What, uh, and, uh, and we're in a room full of investors. What are some of the things that people should know about in terms of the business community and the opportunities to invest and be a part of uh, the UK's business environment? Well, I think um, a number of things. One is the UK is a very stable country. You know, populism is breaking out all over the place, but not in the UK. I mean, it is it is very stable. We have our minor issue with Brexit. You may have read about I that. I did hear about that a couple of times. Um, yeah, I did. But I mean, that. I guess that'll we'll sort that out. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, I think I think when I was doing the industrial strategy for the UK um, two years ago, uh, the what we we sort of came. Our view was that. The, the competitive advantage that we have that is sustainable and, and is outside the US, it can't be touched, is actually our universities. You know, we have fantastic discovery and translational research in the UK, um, spread across the UK, but particularly, I guess, in Oxford, Cambridge, and, and London. And that's very hard to replicate. You know, when um, John, Kenneth, John Kenneth Galbraith, you know, the great American economist, went to India in 
in the late 1940s, and Nero said to Galbraith, how do I create a modern, successful economy? He said, set up a number of universities and wait for 200 years. You know? <laughs> it takes a long time for, to get these universities working. They're very complex ecosystems. But you know, we, we produce more Nobel Prizes out of Cambridge than the whole of France. I rest my case. <laughs> All right. I know you were waiting to get that one in. <laughs> one over on the, on the French. Mm. All right. Um, so you didn't have to take this role. They, they put you forward in September last year. You, I'm sure, had lots of options of what to do with your time. What had you most excited and why did you decide to do it? I think the NHS means something very special. If you're English, the NHS means something very special. And I think if I can help bring some of these new technologies into the NHS, if we can develop our genomic medicine, if we can get our data sets into good shape um, so that the, that the British patient can get the best, the most up-to-date therapies and treatments, then, we'll, we'll, it, I mean, I, you couldn't say no to a job like that. Yeah. If there's one key message that you want the startups in the room to hear, is there uh, anything in particular that you want to make sure they know? Yeah, get on an airplane. Even if it's United, get on an airplane and, and come to the UK and see for yourself. All right. Is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you'd like to make sure the audience hears? No, it's been a real pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, Ladies thank and gentlemen, you very much. give it up for Lord Pryor. Thank you.